Psalm 20 May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the King. Answer us when we call. This psalm has two main sections. Verses 1 to 5 constitute the community's intercession for their King and was sung by the people or by the Levites on their behalf. And verse 6 to 8 express the confidence voiced by a priest or possibly by the King himself that victory is assured. The assurance was probably based on a prophetic or priestly oracle given between verses 5 and 6, declaring that the sacrifice has been accepted and promising God's help. And verse 9 is the concluding prayer of the congregation. John Calvin wrote of this, many interpreters view this prayer as offered up only on one particular occasion, but in this I cannot agree. The occasion of its composition at first may have arisen from some particular battle which was about to be fought, either against the Ammonites or against some other enemies of Israel. But the design of the Holy Spirit, in my judgment, was to deliver to the church a common form of prayer, which, as we may gather from the words, was to be used whenever she was threatened with any danger. So let's have a look at this prayer and how we can use it in our lives and in our church today. In verse 1 and also in verse 9, we see that God answers prayer. He will answer, but of course we need to ask. Remember the story that Jesus told of the persistent neighbour. Keep asking whilst remembering that we ask in the understanding of your will be done. In verse, also, verse 1, we can also see that we ask for protection. In general, the shield, the shield of faith is a good example. But we can also ask for protection at Pacific times, like they did in this psalm. A good example would be Brother Andrew when he, with his boot filled of Bibles, was approaching the Russian border, the Soviet border. He knew that if it was searched and the Bibles found, that he was going to prison, maybe even worse. He offered up prayers of protection. We can ask God for the protection of his Holy Spirit at any times in our lives. So let's continue to do this. In verse 2 we see that the Lord is our helper. Of course the Holy Spirit is also called, called a helper. God is our refuge and strength and we can call out to him in, in, for help in all the situations that we face. The Lord is our helper. In verse 2 we also see that God is our supporter which is also translated as sustainer. God doesn't just help in times of need. He sustains me. He gives me the strength to get through the situation. When we depend on someone to sustain, to, to sustain us, we place our trust in that person to provide for our needs, just as God has promised. From Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God has a large enough supply to sustain us. In verse 4 we see God as giver. If we're dependent upon God daily, when the tough times come, God will be there to help us, to give to us, to give us what we need. Jesus said this clearly, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. 
And don't forget the prayer that Jesus taught us. Don't we ask, give us today our daily bread. God is a giver, he gives what we need. And one final way perhaps we can use this psalm in our prayers is looking at how we can always trust God. Look at verse seven, in God we trust. We can trust God not only to remove the crisis and the difficulties, but also to help us through them. And so doing to achieve his purpose in our lives as well. God will answer our prayers. All he needs is us to trust him. But this prayer of Psalm 20, as well as teaching us about how we can trust God, about how God gives, how God sustains and supports, how God helps and provides, is also a great prayer to use for other people. Take these phrases and change them to the name of a person that you might be praying for. Use Psalm 20 to pray that God will, will sustain, God will provide, God will help, God will, will support. For someone who is on your heart at the moment, what a great psalm to use in this way. Amen.